second part of Pumpkin Patch takes the same design, but this time we're going to thread paint it. The designs are the same, but the finishing is very different. You will be able to see the same design done with two different methods. Okay, uh, now that we've finished the thread sketching version, we're going to do the uh, thread painting. And uh, I want to show you the pictures, the thread sketching version, and then the thread painting version to give you an, a good idea of what you're going to be doing. Now, again, like we did with the thread sketching, you might want to get a piece of muslin, a, some stabilizer and a hoop, and you know, hoop everything up and just practice before you start this. So you get, get your stuff a little bit of rhythm before you start. Now, I've already started um, with some underlay stitches. And an underlay stitch is, again, nothing more than another means of stabilization. Now, if I were doing this um, for real, I would be using an invisible thread over here so that, the, that these orange lines aren't distracting. But for purposes of the video, I'm doing them in the dark orange, which is going to be the first color that we're going to be doing. Now, here again, the underlay stitch is as a form of stabilization. It does not have to be pretty. It just needs to get the job done. And what this will do is this will help to keep the distortion down. Now, when I get up to the top, I'm going to switch back over to about a two millimeter zigzag stitch. And I'm going to turn this hoop. I'm going to do about a 2.5 for me. I'm going to turn this on its side. Now, remember, a zigzag stitch is basically nothing more than a straight line. So for you to make the curve, you're going to have to rotate the hoop. So all you're going to do is we want to fill in just a little bit of this side right through here. Um, and I don't want to fill in every single hole the first time through because I want to come back with some of my medium color orange. And I want to run some of that through the darker orange as well. And once you've done this a little bit, you'll get the hang of you'll get a, a, a certain rhythm that you're going to be very comfortable with after a while. And you'll also pick up a speed. And that speed is what's going to be comfortable for you, not what's comfortable for your neighbor or anybody else. It's going to be what is comfortable for you. So you just keep rotating until you get about what you think is a, a, the right amount of shading on this side. Now I'm going to turn this around and I want to show you that I have left some holes. And let's make this just a little bit more irregular right here. Now remember, I can come back and touch this up later. But see right through here, I follow the, the grain, so to speak, of the pumpkin. And I've left some holes, but that's okay. I'm going to come back in a few minutes, and we're going to actually fill those in. But anytime you're shading an area like this, you don't want to just get it all solid to begin with. All right, so I'm going to change, and let's go to my uh, medium color of orange next. Remember I said a few minutes ago that if I were doing this for real, that I would have an underlay, as a, that I would have an invisible thread as an underlay stitch? Uh, I hope you can pick this up on the camera. But the reason I use an invisible thread is it doesn't uh, distort what I'm seeing, but it still gets the job done as far as stabilizing go. So now I've got my, my actually the body of the, the color, the, whatever color I want this body of the pumpkin to be. That's the color I've got in here now. I'm going to go into some of the darker orange that I've already put into place. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go back over to a straight stitch. I'm going to come down here to the center of this pumpkin. And what I want to do is I want to make a straight line down the center of that pumpkin. Now, the reason I want a straight line here is by the time these lines get to the center, they should be straight up and down. Right here they're curved, right here they're straight up and down. And that just gives you a visual to help you find your way uh, so that by the time you get over there, everything is straight up and down. Now, I'm not going to take the time to fill in this entire space over here, but while you're doing this, you just want to go back and forth. And when you get down here to where the leaves are, if you want to make a little tiny, just go back and forth. Watch the left swing of your needle. You're making sort of a little satin stitch. And what that, what that does is it helps to define that edge a little bit better for you. Now, when I get about half of this done over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this around and I'm going to go over 
to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing over here. And the reason I don't, I like to do half and half is visually it makes it a little bit easier for me to see what's happening here. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to come around through here, watch the right swing on my needle. And that way it helps me to define those edges when I get down there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and forth and I'm going to fill this in until I get it exactly the way I want it to look. And then I'm going to change thread colors and we're going to go to like a secondary shading color. We're going to use a medium gold to help shade around the top a little bit. So I think you've got the idea. Fill in, get these lines gradually straighter as we get to the center right through here. And I'll show you in the, after I've changed thread colors, what I'm talking about. All right, this will give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. This, this right side isn't completely finished, but if you'll look, I've taken my lines and they go like this, and then they straighten up and down, and then I come over here, and I'm gonna do the same thing over there until I get the pumpkin and it looks something like this. So you can, it may not, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but here the lines are straight up and down, and here they are to an angle here on the right hand side. Now I'm going to use like a medium gold for like a secondary um, shading color, and this is going to be pretty quick. Most of this color should be concentrated up near the stem itself. And what you want to do when you're putting this one in is you're going to go back to a straight stitch. And what you want to do is you want to use the thread in place and follow the same arc of the lines that are already there. In other words, don't go straight where it's curved and don't go curved where it's straight. But keep this up here close to the center. And here again, remember there's that knocking sound again, but that's okay. There's just a lot of thread in one place. It's quite a right. Keep these lines irregular. If you looked at a pumpkin, they wouldn't look like somebody had set a bowl on top of its head and made the lines all the same size. What you want to do right before you're finished is come back up in here and finish off, pretty well get that solid up near the stem, right through there. There we go. Now, once you've done that and you've got these colors in, then what I want you to do is I want you to go back and put your number one thread color on, whatever was your darkest thread. And I've come back in through here and I've used my, my this, this lighter shade of orange and this one to come in through here and work with this and blend these together. Then I've taken a straight stitch and all I've done is go up through here with a little bit of this darker color to give us, because there would be naturally be some shading uh, right along, right through this area, right through here. Okay, we're almost done. We're going to put the highlight on here and then we'll be ready to start with the leaves in the dirt. Okay, now I've put on the brightest yellow that I have because I need something fairly bright to be able to show up over all these other colors. Now, you're going to do the same thing you did with the secondary shading color. You want to follow the grain of the pumpkin. In other words, if the lines are straight, these should be straight too. And this will take a little bit to get them in where they're strong enough that you can see them. Now remember, this is in shadow over here, so you don't want to be putting, um, you may want to put some here at the top, but I wouldn't be putting any over there along the side because that's in shade. Here again, keep this fairly uh, compact up near the stem. And I think if I were doing this, I would add just a little bit more, but I think you get the idea. Now what I want to show you Next is I want to show you what this is going to look like once uh, you have all this done. All right, this is how this is going to look when you're, when you're done. You can see how strong I've made these accent colors in here. I wanted you to be able to see that highlight a lot in through, in through here. And then I went back and I picked up this darkest orange. And what I've done is I've followed the contour of the pumpkin again. This would be straight up and down, curve, curve. And I've just gone over these lines a little bit just to give them um, the darkness that they need. Now up here on the stem, I'm not going to bother uh, showing you this because I pretty well showed you this in when we're sketching it. Uh, you're going to set the machine to about a 1.5 millimeter and 
turn this on its side and you're just going to go back and forth, back and forth until you fill this, the stem in. Down here, the, the dirt is the same as in Solitary Tree and is on Sketching the Pumpkins. We're just going to move the hoop east to west. And remember, there's two shades of brown that have to come in here. And you want to put your, your dirt down before we put these cute little leaves on that we're getting ready to do next. Okay, the veins are going to be exactly like we did in the sketching version, except you need to really make sure that these are going to be sturdy enough because we've got to bump up. Remember now, we're going to be thread painting these, and we're going to be filling them in completely. Choose whatever colors you want, or whichever ones are suggested in the PDFs, and there's five little veins you're going to go through, and you're going to uh, just use your straight stitch, and whatever colors you want for the veins, you're going to go ahead and put those in. Now, I want to show you first what we're getting ready to do right here. What we're going to do is we're going to do these little color leaves, and I want you to see these first. But see, I've left the veins intact in here, and I've just thread painted around the edges. So let me show you. I'm going to show you on one on here because it's a little bit easier to see this way. All right. I've already thread painted the veins in here. Now I'm going to set my machine to somewhere between a 1.5 and a 2 millimeter zigzag. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to take a couple of stitches. And I'm going to anchor my thread. Now what I want you to notice, I'm going to turn this upside down so that it's a little bit easier for you to see. The line that I'm thread painting, remember it's got to be parallel to me. I'm painting that line right there. Thread painting. That's going to be the line I'm parallel to. I'm going to go around, I'm going to find the outside edge, I'm going to let the machine, the left hand swing of that needle, catch the outside edge of that leaf. I'm going to come around, and now I'm going to go back and I'm going to fill this in. I'm just going to move it back and forth. And when you come to that center line, the center line of the vein, all you want to do is just bump it. Now it's best if you can fill in all your holes while you're here, it'll make things a little bit easier. All right, so I've got that part filled. Now I'm going to rotate the hoop until this line is parallel to me. I'm going to leave the vein. I'm just going to bump to the center, come across, kind of make a satin stitch down the edge. And I'm just going to move this back and forth until I fill it in. Same thing here. Now when I get up to this upper part, I'm going to want to reduce my width to about a 1 because I've got a really small little area up here that I'm trying to thread paint. I'm going to come up to the top. See how cute that looks? I'm going to come around. I'm going to get this, get my line back parallel to me, which is probably off the screen for you right now. I'm going to come down through here. Now, this line right here is parallel to me. I'm going to go back up to about a 1.5 to 2 millimeter zigzag. I'm going to bump to the center line, and I'm going to go around here to the other edge. I'm going to rotate my hoop until this line is parallel to me. What you're trying to do is to is make your stitches as concise as possible. Go out through here, and let your machine do the work. I find that students in class they try to horse the hoop around. Instead of letting, the hoop, letting your machine do all the work, they try to horse it around. All right. Now, I have a few holes in here, but that's okay. But see how cute this looks? I've got my vein. Now, I would go back and I would touch this up, probably with a straight stitch, right here, where I went over my line. I would just bring a straight stitch back and just touch this up at the end. And so that's all there is to it. And this is what you're going to end up with right here. Uh, is this cute little thread painted um, pumpkin patch.